Hello, YouTube. Lysurgic here, and we're back with more Planet Side. This is video number two in my extended series of Planet Side. I'm going to be teaching you how to play the game, and this is where we're going to start hopping into gameplay, but it's still going to be a lot of informative stuff before we go to the actual nuances of killing people. So, like I said, if you're a veteran or you're looking for something that you haven't heard before, you might want to skip this video, hop to the next one. Because this video is going to be more about the class system, how it works, the advantages of each one. And it's mostly basic info that if you've been playing the game for a while, you're already going to know. But for a beginner, this is invaluable advice. So if you haven't played more or you want to get really good at this game, or you just want to make sure you're not missing anything before you start out, stick around. Okay, so the first class we're going to talk about is the Infiltrator. This is your class screen. This is your character right here, how he's going to appear in the game. And we'll start on the right side. You got different loadouts here. This is like your loadout screen in Call of Duty or Battlefield or whatever. So you can save everything. You can save into a loadout. And you can have up to seven of them. You unlock more when you rank up. So this is your primary weapon. This is your attachments, secondary weapon attachments, and so on. Uh, every class has a tool. The sniper's tool is either a recon detection device or a motion spotter. They're both basically motion trackers, but this one is stationary, has more range. The other one is like a little dart that you fire and has a little bit less range, but you can shoot it into a room and tell exactly where your enemies are. It's very, very useful. Except enemies can see that there's a motion spot, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, a recon detection device. If you shoot a recon dart, into a room, your enemies are going to be able to see that there's a recon dart in the room somewhere and they can find it and destroy it. So, also every class has an ability and abilities are very important. The special ability is what makes your class stand out. For example, the infiltrator has cloaking and you have three different kinds of cloaking. You don't have to stick with the one you start with. The cloaking is very important because who doesn't want to be invisible? Each one works a little differently. But my personal favorite is the Hunter Cloaking, which you can move around in the Hunter Cloaking. You don't have any benefits like no energy drain or take less damage. But the Hunter Cloaking is really cool because you can activate it, pop out of cover, and until you're ready to shoot, your enemy can't see you. That's very useful for when you're sniping. So with that wrapped up, you have a suit ability too. Now everybody shares the same suit abilities. Your class ability is unique everybody has every class is a different class ability your suit ability is shared among everybody and one of the best ones is nano weave armor with every rank of nano weave armor you unlock you get more and more resistance to small arms fire and generally in most fights what's killing you most of the time is either explosions or small arms fire and the ones that protect you from that are flak armor and nano weave armor so, to upgrade your nano weave armor, you gotta pump certs into it. And to unlock certs, you gotta get kills. Roughly for every two kills, you get a cert. But just like, you know, Call of Duty or Battlefield, destroying vehicles, headshots, they all get you more experience points. Um, killing somebody on a kill streak, they all get you more experience points and therefore more certs. So that's how the cert system works. So you have like five ranks of most things. Some things have two ranks, some things have three ranks, some things have five ranks. And every time you pump certs into them, they get a little bit better. One of the most important tips is that if you want something, go ahead and unlock the first rank of it. Because usually the subsequent rank, subsequent ranks, excuse me, are less and less effective. So the biggest boost you're going to be getting is from unlocking that nano weave armor or unlocking that C4. The subsequent ranks, which cost exponentially more, are going to give you a diminishing return on how effective that weapon or that skill you unlocked how good it works so my favorites are flak armor and nano weave armor adrenaline pump is pretty cool better sprint speed that's important for an infiltrator it's good works good with your cloak those kind of things then you got your grenades you always want to keep this checked because that means when you're empty you purchase a grenade from your nanites your nanites are your resources you use those to purchase things like vehicles grenades uh, C4, you can use them to purchase the Max, which is basically the big bad class that you can only pull one of every couple minutes. 
and your nanites regenerate. How fast your nanites regenerate is based on how your empire is doing and also is determined by tech plants and amp stations and these things. But your nanites are used uh, one currency for everything. So you can pull two tanks in a row, but that means that you can't pull a max or a plane. Or you can pull a tank and a plane, but then you can't pull a max. It's shared among all of the things that cost nanites. Then you have a utility. That's something like a medical kit or a proxy mine. The medical kit's very important. I would recommend that you get that early. Then we have a knife. Every empire has a different knife. It all does the same thing. It stabs people. <laughs> so get your knife and get stabbing. I don't I don't think you can buy more knives. The only reason it has this little detail screen is to show you the damage and the accuracy, which I don't think matters. And uh, you can uh, sh you can see which medals you have attained with the knife. Every kill you get with a weapon goes toward a medal. And that's another thing that has diminishing returns. For more medals, it's going to take more and more kills. And that encourages you to try out more weapons because the more weapons you try out, the more you'll get the first couple medals for those weapons, which takes a shorter amount of time and the more experience points you get. We have acquired the facility. Then you have the implant system. The implants are like little tiny boosts that take up your implant energy. And that takes a longer amount of time to recharge. I don't really mess with them, so I can't tell you much about the implants. But if I do, we'll probably do a whole separate video because it can be complicated. You unlock implants by killing people and you, you uh, can buy implant packs and mix and match them and you can combine them. But uh, they're not really necessary to do well at the game. You, do not, you definitely do not need implants to do well at the game. Usually they are tiny little perks and bonuses and that give you a little bit of an advantage that you could definitely capitalize on, but you definitely don't need it, as I said. So let's go back here. This is the cert system. Everybody and every vehicle has a little thing right here, which is extra certifications that don't fit into a class. Every weapon and every tool and every suit ability has its own certification, like, bar. But you also, for your specific class or your specific vehicle, can certify something. So, your infiltrator has advanced terminal hacking. The infiltrator plays a very specific role in taking over bases because he's the only one that can hack terminals. So, you can upgrade this and you hack terminals faster. The next couple classes will go shorter now that I've explained the system to you. So, that's a little bit more than enough about the infiltrator than you'd like to hear for today so let's move on and get the rest of these classes covered the light assault special ability he's got a jetpack jetpack is definitely important because this game has a lot a lot a lot of vertical terrain and what could be a death trap because there's 20 people around the corner fighting 20 people are on your team and they're just out of stalemate just blowing the crap out of each other if you pick a light assault at a strategic time, you could hop over that mountain or climb the wall into that base and run around and sometimes get five, six, seven, ten kills on people who are completely unawares that you just went up and around and surprised the crap out of them. A lot of a lot of new players do really well with the light assault, but you have to be wary with the jetpack. If you get too excited, you're just gonna fly up into a bunch of bullets. And I've done that more times than I would like to admit, I promise. Primary weapons for the light assault. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of primary weapons for everybody, even the infiltrator as well for that matter. But like I said before, each weapon has its own certification bar or little certification menu per se. So I've purchased this gun, the Dymos, previously. Let's take a look at that. The Dymos has its own optic system. It has rail, ammo, camo. All these things cost certs, or you can unlock them with station cash. So since I have a little bit of station cash, let's say we want to unlock this red dot sight for our shotgun. 
Dynamos is a pump action shotgun. It's the best shotgun on the Vanu Sovereignty and one of the best shotguns in the game besides the Jackhammer. So that's a pro tip right there. The Dynamos, pick it up. Close range is a one shot kill. It's awesome. So you click unlock. You get it. I did that with Station Cash. Normally it costs certs, but uh, attachments for weapons are usually less certs. So now we can see the little red dot sign on the top of the gun. Attachments for weapons are usually less certs than unlocking the weapons themselves. You know, it's only like 100 certs. It's not that bad. Which you can earn very quickly if you're capping bases and killing people. You can earn 100 certs in a very short amount of time. You got extended magazines, laser sights, slug ammunition, all kinds of camo, all kinds of stuff that you can that you can customize your guns and your character with. You can put on different helmets, you know, customize the camo on your armor. Secondary weapons have the same thing. Secondary weapons, you can put all sorts of attachments on if you got them and if you want to buy them. So the heavy, he's got his jetpack. It's a huge advantage um, in like base cap in situations because you can hop on the roof when no one else can go. You can shoot down on people. You can get out of sticky situations sometimes very easily. It's a good class. All the classes are good, but the heavy is definitely one of my favorite. Combat medic. Is another one that I love to play. I spend a lot of time as the medic. Uh, his very, very, very important role in cap and bases is healing people. And I'm going to put some footage in here showing you what happens when you constantly heal your teammates. Because one of the most important aspects that I got to jump back and show you real quick on the map is that I can only spawn at a base I own. Now, there's a hundred some odd bases on this map or something like that. I may be exaggerating, but... Look, there's a lot. Now you can see these little things? These are Sunderers. Those are mobile spawn points. Because if I spawn here and want to walk here or drive here, that's a bit of a hike to get back into the action. Now if my team drives a Sunderer up in this base and deploys it, which to deploy the Sunderer is a skill or whatever you want to call it, an attachment for the Sunderer that you got to buy for 50 certs. If I drive my Sunderer up in here and deploy it in this base, hopefully in a safe spot, my team can spawn there. So that's a huge, huge aspect of capturing the bases is having a forward operating point, a Sunderer that's in a good place that you can defend. And how that relates to our friend the Medic is that if we're halfway into the base and the Sunderer is parked all the way outside, a couple of, a couple of certified, excuse me, Medics, a couple of certified Medics and by certified, I mean experienced. If they keep resing their team and their res guns are all jacked up and certified to the max and they just keep on, keep on resing their teammates, no matter how much you pound on them, they're going to keep coming back up. Res resurrecting your teammates is a huge, huge part of the game and it's a huge part of being able to advance into a base and take the thing. So that's the medic. His certifications are triage. He can heal people inside vehicles. He's got... The same suitabilities as everybody else except for the medic, I would definitely take Nano Weave or Grenade Bandolier. Especially if you get the Res Grenade. The Nanite Res Grenade is amazing, but we'll we'll get to that. Now, let's talk about weapon classes real quick. Every class can use different weapon classes and some of those coincide together. The Infiltrator can use Sniper Rifles, Scout Rifles, SMGs. The assault, the light assault class can use shotguns, everybody can use SMGs, and they can use carbines. The combat medic is the only class that can use assault rifles, but they can also use battle rifles, shotguns, SMGs. So let's move on to the engineer. The engineer's ability is the repair kit. He can bring armor back to max suits, he can bring armor back to vehicles, he can repair turrets. He can repair generators and bases, which is a huge, huge, huge part of capping a base, is either keeping your generators repaired so they can't get through the gate shields, or keeping your vehicles repaired so you can defend or attack that base. The engineer is one of the most important parts to being able to get into a base and take people out, or especially defending a base. But you gotta keep your armor zerg going if you really wanna get anywhere in this map. If you wanna make a dent, on that big, you want to make a dent on that big blue blob the NC is taking right now. You definitely need some some engineers to keep your armor zerg going. 
So the engineer, he repairs stuff. You can upgrade your repair gun so that it doesn't overheat as fast and that it regenerates quicker. Like I said, he can use carbines, shotguns, DMRs, and also SMGs. Now you're thinking, wait a second, the combat medic, he's the only person that can use the assault rifles? Yes, the combat medic is the only person that can use the assault rifles. He's a combat medic. The combat medics are a force to be reckoned with because the other quick moving classes, the light assault and the engineer, they can only use carbines, which have a bit of a shorter range. So the medic, while he has that full auto, you know, uh, assault rifle capability, he can also take you out from a longer range than the light assault of the engineer can. So, so you want to keep that in mind. Now the heavy assault, his gig is his shield. So he's not as much of a teamwork player as the other three classes we just discussed. The heavy assault can definitely be a teamwork player if he makes good use of his rocket launcher, but his special ability is the nanite mesh generator. The shield is a huge, huge advantage in one-on-one -on -one fights, as is a giant light machine gun, but the heavy assault's great at one-on-one -on -one fights. They're great at taking out vehicles because they're the only ones that have rocket launchers, except for the engineer, they can have a rocket turret. And as you can see, I'm sure now by this point that there's a lot of nuances to these little classes. You can have an engineer who has a rocket turret who can all because so he can also take out vehicles. I can have uh, a light assault with C4 so he can jump on a tank and take out vehicles. But the heavy assault and the max are your dedicated vehicle taker outers. <laughs> so your shield is going to stop you from taking a lot of splash damage from a tank. Basically, you hit F on the shield, you activate it, and it takes damage for you to a certain point. It'll take like one, two, three bullets maybe before it goes down, and then you start taking damage. So you have an extra shield on top of your normal health. So that's really good combined with flak armor or nano weave armor to increase your health and your increase your sticking power. Now he can upgrade the munitions pouch to carry more rockets. And he doesn't have a class specific cert because he's got his shield. And you have a myriad of different rocket launchers to choose from. Uh, you can buy the Lancer, which is a specific rocket launcher for the VS, which is not even really a rocket launcher. It's more of like a laser beam launcher. And that's actually a pretty badass uh, way to take out vehicles. Now, one thing I want to mention before we move on to the max is that every empire, while they have 90% of their weapons are specific, you know, everybody's got these empire specific weapons, even the pistols, you know, most of the pistols you can't get on any other empire. There's also non-specific weapons. In the lore, it, it's because of nanite systems or somebody, but they're a neutral weapons manufacturer who makes weapons and vehicles for everybody. So you have the lightning tank, the lightning tank can be used by any empire. We'll show you that one later. The Valkyrie uh, plane and the galaxy dropship can be used by any empire. Everybody's got the same galaxy and they all got the same lightning tank. And they also make some guns. And some of the way better guns, some of the really good guns are these uh, non-empire specific guns. So that's like the NS7. If you see NS on anything or you see this form factor that really doesn't look like it belongs to your empire that's usually an ns weapon and these ns weapons can be really cool um the shotguns are okay but this suppressed it's an integrally suppressed smg it's a good way to spend your certs because you don't gotta spend a hundred certs on a suppressor and it has a really good fire rate it's pretty cool so that's how the weapon system works that's how the class system works we'll get to the max We'll wrap this up real quick, and then we're going to get to some gameplay for real this time. Alright guys, this is the Max. The Max is just an awesome class. It's definitely something that makes this game stand out, and I would say that the Vanu Sovereignty has probably the most badass looking Max that I've ever seen <laughs> in this game. You can definitely customize the head, you can put cool camo on him, but you don't need to because the Vanu Sovereignty has one big scary looking Max. He looks like the guy from Crisis on steroids, doesn't he, with big crab arms. <laughs> with the Vanu Sovereignty, their max has a very, very important special ability called Zealot Overdrive Engine, or Zoe is what you're going to hear it called. 
For 15 seconds after being activated, it increases forward walk speed by 50% and all other directions by 43%. Close range damage output is also increased, while at the same time leaving the max more susceptible to damage. So if you've got two or three maxes, and engineers to repair them, because remember, maxes can't be repaired by uh, healers, combat medics, they have to be repaired by... Excuse me, they have to be repaired by the engineers. Man, I just... I, my, my brain is not working today, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for that, guys. So yeah, the Zealot Overdrive Engine, or Zoe, is definitely a huge advantage, and that's a specific ability for their max. The NC max, they got shields, the TR Max, they can deploy and be stuck in one spot and do more damage. But the Zoe is definitely the best Empire-specific Max ability. So I'm sure as you're noticing now, whatever Empire you pick, it's going to be a totally unique experience. There's literally tons of guns, even for the Max. There's tons of guns for every class for you to try out. You're never going to see everything in this game. I mean, look how big this continent is. There is so much stuff to see on this continent and there's freaking four other ones for you to fight on if they ain't locked and usually the vs is the one doing the locking so i'm surprised that uh we're losing on on esimir over here uh in case you were wondering right now i'm currently playing uh i'm currently playing new conglomerate but my heart is still with the vanu sovereignty because they were my first character they were my first love spandex and lasers for life baby <laughs> But we're going to be playing with the Vanu Sovereignty character for the sake of, you know, giving giving you uh, something comparable to the new player's experience. Because that's what I want to show you guys. So the max, to close it up, the max costs you nanites. So you can only pull a certain amount of maxes in a certain amount of time before you have to wait for your nanites to recharge. And the benefit of that is that you get a crap ton of health. Your health doesn't regenerate, but usually when an engineer sees you, he comes over to heal you so he can get some points too. Just like any good engineer or medic would do. And the Mac can be revived, but he can't be revived by an engineer, only a medic like a normal soldier. So if you're dead, only a medic can help you, and if you got low health, only an engineer can help you. And that's important to know when you're yelling for somebody to help you. As far as weapons go, the Maxes have really cool weapons. They have better LMGs than the Heavy Assault, as far as these pew 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 laser cannons go. They basically look like giant crab arms for the Vanish Sovereignty, and another important thing for the Max is the Burster. The Burster is a Nanite Systems gun, everybody can have it, and it's basically a flak cannon. So you are like a mobile flak anti-artillery with two of these things, and as you can see you have two guns, so if I want to equip two bursters now i got these big giant flat cannons on my arms and these things are terrible for killing people but ridiculous for killing air and when i hear a burster max and i'm in my little plane which i'm terrible at flying anyway i turn around and i fly the other way a lot of it is rock paper scissors as we're gonna sh as we're gonna see a lot of this game is strategy which is what makes it probably the main reason that it makes it my one of my favorite fps's if not my favorite fps of all time or at least of the time right now. Because this is probably one of the only games besides Arma where you're not going to do ever, you're never going to do good, or you're never going to be helpful to your team if you can't be strategic. It's like rock, paper, scissors. If there's a lot of air cover, you got to pick a max or you got to pick a heavy assault with their lock on rocket launches. If it's, you know, a 1v1 situation where a lot of the time you're running around corners. If you want to help your team, you want to be a heavy assault or an infiltrator with the cloak or the shield. Um, there's a lot of good situations where having an LMG with a high rate of fire and more stability is useful. And there's a lot, uh, there's a whole lot of situations where you need to be resing your team so you can keep pushing in. You don't have to all go back to the Sunderer and start a push again. Being a medic is very important for keeping pressure on the other team. So you can keep that charge going. You don't have to all run back to your sundry. You can just keep resing your teammates and pushing forward. Being an infiltrator, while a lot of people think that infiltrators don't, you know, um, don't contribute to the team, a lot of people say, being an infiltrator is also extremely important because if there was no infiltrator sitting in the back by the sundry or up on the cliff, cloaked, picking off all the enemies, there would be a lot of people just standing around shooting you that are not 
in the main part of the battle because a huge role of the infiltrator is looking for people standing around trying to pick off other people counter sniping and if you can't counter snipe who's going to do it that heavy is just going to sit up on the sit up on the balcony you know shooting people as they walk by until the infiltrator pops them in the head so there's definitely a very important role into playing each of these classes and the reason i took so much time out to explain them to you is because it's important to know when you should be using this class so for the next video we're going to do a quick gameplay demo of each class i'm going to hop into a battle show you guys a little bit of the strategic decisions you need to make I'm going to show you which weapons I like to use, how I think each class works best, how to operate each class. Now, I'm not, you know, top 10 in the world at this game, but I have led a lot of platoons before. I have led a, lot, a whole lot of squads before, and I know where it's important to be when with what class, and that's 90% of the battle. That's 90% of how you get a lot of points and how you dominate this game. So tune in next time. We'll, we'll go over each class and, and where they're effective, and I'll give you a little demonstration of that. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and have a good one. Oh, no way. Check this out. Okay, so I, I have never seen this before because I have not made a character in a very long time. But apparently, when you first load in with a new character, they give you some gear to play around with, which I have never seen before. But that's definitely going to help uh, a new player get a leg up. They even give you a gun. And guns take a pretty long time to unlock in this game. You know, of grinding for certs. So you got to pick carefully when you do buy one. But the Pulsar LSW here, this is one... This is one of the best... Um, one of the best LMGs that I have seen for the uh, Heavy Assault. It's one of my favorites to use. It, it definitely kicks some ass. But that's another thing that I wanted to mention quick before I uh, call it quits here is that no matter what unlocks you have, no matter if you have certified into every single thing in the game, which isn't even possible because there's so many of them, no matter what you unlocked and no matter how much you money you put into the game, whatever it is, one of my favorite things about Planetside is that if you're tactically aware, if you're a smart player, you don't need to spend a single dollar from the starting guns you get, which are some of the best guns in the game that you start with, you can absolutely kill any other player in the game. There's no way to unlock enough stuff to give you an advantage that you're going to be invincible to a newbie. It's not like leveling up to 100 in WoW where a level 1 could never kill you. It's not like that at all. So always remember, some important tips. Half the battle is knowing where to stand. Tactical awareness is your best friend. It trumps everything, knowing knowing what's around you, seeing, being aware of every all the explosions that are going off around you and what's causing them. And from the beginning of the game, you can definitely kick ass. Just know what class to pick, know where to go. And if you're losing a fight, don't hesitate to go somewhere else. Because you, you can, if you're not doing anything, you're just getting killed over and over again. There's plenty of places on the map that you could be more useful. All right, so next time we get in, we're definitely going to have some gameplay. <laughs> for real this time. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And everyone, have a good night.